What's up guys, Dignity here, and today I am bringing you the vacuum cleaner, ghost busting, loot explosion, whatever build you want to call it. I am going to show you, start to finish, how to set this up for yourself, get going in your own maps, and um, pretty much farm the most amount of loot in a single map that I have ever seen. So it doesn't matter how much quantity you put on it at this point, um, farming maps with this method is just ridiculous as far as the loot generation so especially if you're able to do it in like 75 plus maps I'm pretty sure your regal generation is absolutely out of this world um, so I can't really claim credit for the mechanics behind how to do this um, I can only claim credit for my own variation of my cycloner which is an extremely low budget version of um, the cycloner and uh, how to suck the mobs up but the the premise is um, that you will create a cycloner that has very high block and use life gain on hit on everything that you possibly can to spin to win as much as possible and instead of uh, knocking enemies back you will use knockback and the fending cluster as well as knockback jewels to suck the enemies in with the Empire's Grasp Reverse Knockback Gloves. You will apply Torment to your map before you even get started, and this will put a guarantee of at least three ghosts in your map. And you'll spin to win straight through whatever map you're in and gather as many mobs as possible to uh, basically uh, collide with a ghost and have the ghost tag all of those mobs. Now, your Cycloner has a few criteria one being nearly 100% knockback, if not 100%. This will ensure that all the mobs uh, remain uh, like close to you and pulled by you, and you don't have too many stragglers uh, that you drop as you spin through your map. Um, two, it needs very high block, and this can be achieved through um, the rich version, which is Bringer of Rain and Aegeus Aura. Um, Aegeus Aura has very, very high base block chance. A Bringer of Rain also gives block in um, as an explicit, and it allows you to input the Cyclone links into um, the Bringer of Rain with you know blind and such already added on there, and that allows you to really um, hit max block cap easily through the passive tree and from there you just simply put in um, the knockback gems and jewels and go to town my version however I needed to make with a shadow which is not really the ideal way to go I just did not want to respec and re-level just for this or re-level completely for, for this so I just re respect it um, but I did spend about an exalt and some change to uh, to respect my tree I made a pretty decent um, tree so far it works um, it's not the most optimized however once we get in here and we see, and you see this you're gonna be like holy moly what have I been doing and why have I not been doing this the entire time um, so I do have a map prepared and we'll go ahead and we'll jump over um, to the cycloner but that's like the first step is getting the cycloner up and running and pulling all the mobs in through ghosts and the second half of that is having a magic finder ready to go to go back through and kill all these mobs so you get the benefit of increased item rarity and increased item quantity if you can and this literally just puts more physical loot on the on the map than your screen can contain multiple times over um, so we'll hop over to my cycloner here I've already got a map rolled and ready to go. We're going to do a quick strand just to show this off. But uh, I'll take a second here and briefly look at um, what my gear has right now. So I'm using an Arum Varox just to um, have the additional range that a one-handed sword does as far as our Cyclone range. It does give a little bit of life gain on hit, which is kind of nice because you'll be hitting dozens and dozens and dozens of enemies at the same time. I'm using Empire's Grasp, and in that I have linked um, Reckoning, Vengeance, and Repost to life gain on hit. Now all of these are also supported. Gems are socketed, gems are supported by level 10 knockback, which is okay. Um, level 10 knockback was not going to be 100%. 
but it's still going to be very nice. It's going to keep mobs, uh, stragglers, potentially closer to you. But more than anything, it's going to be giving you a ton of life gain on hit from all of these triggers happening all the time. So my main links here are in a nice uh, six link, but if you use Bringer Brain, then you don't have to worry about this. But I use Cyclone, Faster Attacks, and Blind, with increased area of effect, life gain on hit, and knockback. Now the important thing is having knockback around level 19 or 20 with 20 quality. This gives you the maximum amount of chance to knockback per hit and you want this to be very high at its base if we look here at um, cyclone our chance to knock back right now is 96 percent so if we have a hundred mobs grouped up then four of them every time we attack are potentially going to be lost and 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 fall out of the pull cycle that we have I use the uh, front door shield, Lion Eyes and Morris, for the maximum amount of armor, the high life. The movement speed penalty is actually not that bad because uh, cycloning slower is a little bit easier to keep the mobs with you. However, um, there are definitely much better shields like Aegeus Aura that would be able to go in this place. This is just pretty much something I had in my stash and, and it made the most logical sense as far as armor and life. Um, because we're going to be taking a ton of hits. You'll see my character's health bar yo-yo like a roller coaster. Um, so it is important, I think, to have at least very high armor or very high defense at base block chance coming off your shield. The next thing that we have is the anvil. Now this would normally be a pretty terrible itemization for just about every build, even if you're going for max block, it's really not ideal. However, um, with this, you gain a ton of life and mana whenever you do block. And if you check out our defensive tab, our block chance is 45% right now. Um, so because of the 45% chance to block, we're going to be generating a lot of mana and a lot of life from all, you know, if 100 mobs are hitting us all at the same time, 45 of them are going to be blocked. Um, so... In addition to that, it also raises the maximum block chance. It reduces our movement speed, which helps us slow down and keep the mobs with us. So all around, it's a really nice fit. Um, I'm using just a really high, um, like life sheet or not life, but life helmet here with some resistances. But you could easily use the bringer of rain, and then you wouldn't have to worry about a chest piece. I'm using max movement speed boots to counter all of this stuff because I do want to move rather quickly. Um, the most important thing I think that's in this build right now is this one chaos belt called Diadian Dawn. Now if you do not use this belt, you are forced to use something like Ancestral Bond. The reason that you have to use either Diadian Dawn or Ancestral Bond is you do not deal damage with skills yourself, and in this one you deal no physical damage. So because of this, you won't actually kill any of the mobs that you're sucking up around the map. You'll just pull them and deal very, very little um, amounts of damage from any sort of elemental damage that you might have on your gear. Um, I don't think I really have any, um, so we don't really actually deal damage at all. The um, important things to grab, things like this Amplify cluster to help give you area of effect radius, and more important than anything is to grab jewels with chance to knock back on hit. Now because I have, I think, five jewels total that have chance to knock back on hit, and one jewel that has mana gained for each enemy um, hit by my attacks, I'm able to achieve 96, or if they were all, if all of these guys, like there's a 4% knockbacker, and this guy right here is a 4% knockbacker. If those were just 6% knockbackers, then we would have a 100% chance, and we wouldn't really drop any mobs at all. However, we, uh, I'm not too like worried about min maxing that just for this purpose. I just kind of want to show you this. Um, so you can see my tree down here includes the fending cluster and includes some life. We path through a life uh, wheel, but I'm not very high level, um, so I have really no interest. This is like a level 75 character that I respect, so I have really no interest in filling this right now. Um, we did get a little bit of armor scaling. Get a little bit of uh, more armor scaling through here and some life on our way to the amplify cluster. We pick up Command of Steel 
we pick up Defiance, and this is to help us achieve a higher block rate. Um, we pick up the Master of the Arena for the melee weapon range, and we pick up the Art of the Gladiator to help remove the um, like movement penalty for wearing a chest, etc. Now the other thing that's important to pick up is Iron Reflexes, because we will be running Grace. Other than that, um, this is just a typical Shadow start. Um, we grabbed some Jewel, grabbed some Jewel, um, and you know, depending on what level character you are and who you're starting as, um, Scion has pretty good access to this cluster right here for a little bit extra area of effect. Could even potentially, I guess, start this as a witch. I don't think it's really ideal, but you could. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility and options there. Just getting into a tree that includes these key things. Fending, maximum um, block from your shields, and uh, iron reflexes are all important. This amplify up here is pretty important, and um, I use resolute techniques so that I never miss. Um, if you don't, then I think you need to include resolute techniques and ancestral bond, or resolute techniques and this belt right here. Now this belt is actually very, very good for this build. It saves me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. And that's pretty intense when I'm only level 75. So that's points that I can spend elsewhere. If you're level, you know, 85 to 90, that might not be the biggest deal breaker or make the biggest uh, impact. However, um, Without uh, without this belt, I would be killing things. I would need Ancestral Bond in order to make my skills deal no damage. Um, so that's the explanation of what I did to set this up from the perspective of the puller. Now, I could be running like better flasks and such like that, but I'm not, unfortunately. Um, no, I just pretty much suicide the character at some point when I've gathered up too many mobs. I just try to find the ghost get the mobs in there, and then move on to try to pull the next pack into the next set of ghosts. But for these, for this purposes, we're going to be running a Strander, which is pretty good. Uh, I've rolled us a really nice map, and you can go ahead and put Torment right on it. It will give you three guaranteed ghosts, and we're just going to drag all of these mobs directly into them as best as we possibly can. So, hoping for the best. Um, try to get at least um, two out of the three ghosts pulled into our group. I generally use uh, like three-ish portals on pulling and two to three portals on looting or you know magic finding it. But as you can see and just uh, welcome to the Congo line just choo-choo just uh, chugging right along here probably want to grab these guys if we can and if we had a hundred percent knockback chance we really wouldn't be dropping any of these guys so Alright, so the Sea Witches are definitely giving us a problem, even with the Alpha Sal, uh, we're struggling. I actually, when I played through this video the first time and I was actually in the map, I was cursing so much at these Sea Witches that I just said, okay, maybe, maybe I'll just delete this part of the audio and uh, I'll give you guys something that is like... PG. <laughs> so I've died here and I'm really frustrated because I am wearing an Alpha's Howl. But the problem is the Sea Witches stack a debuff on you um, that slows you down. So even though you're in the middle of cycloning, you're okay until the cyclone ends and then all of a sudden you get frozen. Um, so my first plan of attack here is to continue to do what I'm doing, but avoid the Sea Witches. And that kind of works a little bit. Like I just, I say screw that pack over there. Um, I continue to progress through here. And I basically, from this point forward, do my best to not pick up any Sea Witches. Now the problem is, if we would have gotten that pack that I just died at before a little closer then we would have totally made it worth it. If, if we could have landed that pack into that ghost, that would have been fine. That would have been perfect. Unfortunately, we got stopped short, 
And here I'm getting pretty frustrated because we only have one sea witch. This is one sea witch basically locking us down. And especially the moment that the cyclone ends, we end up in a little bit of a like tricky situation. Um, so these guys make it pretty far before I end up, uh, you know, sadly dying again. <laughs> it's unfortunate that the Sea Witches rolled on this ma uh, on this pack, and you would need immunity to both chill and freeze um, before you could probably do Sea Witches effectively. Maybe with, like, higher max block? I don't know. Maybe that would have something to do with it. But at this point, I should have just let them go. Uh, but you can see me, like doing my best to try to like get around them and uh, you know unfortunately I'm just sucking up as many sea witches as I'm avoiding at this point so when they stack that freeze debuff up on you the slow chill one you just eventually get uh, completely locked down when the cyclone animation ends you can't cyclone again um, so it does lock you up and here I'm, I'm really really frustrated um, you know it's eight chaos to start the map up uh, you know in addition to the four chisels and whatever scour alks you spend on it so at this point I make the decision to just say screw it I'm just gonna like avoid it I'm gonna jump around all that stuff I'm gonna get to the other side and I'm going to uh, grab as many things as I can and just take it to the boss because I know we've only hit one ghost so far and it's actually in that rare mob right there so because of that there's gotta be a, a ghost or two guaranteed really close to us and fortunately for us there's actually two ghosts on top of each other right up above um, the like ledge where you get up onto the boss's area so Making it to there, like unbeknownst to me, right here, I'm just really, really mad. But unbeknownst to me, um, I'm actually able to uh, make it to the top there. And you'll see here in a second that it all pays off for us. There's got to be a ghost up here. Nice. Nice. Alright, so you see how these are like double touched? Mutilators touch, cannibals touch? I think that just made up for all of the shittiness from the sea witches before. Pocket A. All right, well, this is ideally what you're looking for, and um, let's hope that we can basically use these three portals. We're there at the end, you know what I mean? That was all three ghosts. Um, so hopefully we can use these three portals and uh, and magic find the shit out of these guys. Ah, oh, okay, that makes me feel so much better. I was, I was frustrated, man. I was frustrated, and, uh, and I think that just made up for all of it. <laughs> I think that just made up for every bit of it. So let's go ahead and take a peek, see. Again, we're running with 350 uh, rarity and about 15 quantity. Uh, we're on warbands, you know, so we don't have much, um, you know, uh, access to legacy out of quantity gear. You know what I mean? We'd have to basically probably make a whole new build built around getting very, very high quantity if I wanted to add, you know, go low life. Um, and I'm just not too interested in doing that. Kind of doing the budget version of this first. Seeing how well it's performing. And we'll go from there. Oh, now this will spawn beyonders. Need to be quite careful.
Now these guys haven't been touched, right? So we're not even to the to the like money maker part. We're just clearing up to all the junk. Now this is the first uh, mini pack that we had, and as you can see, the loot is already good. But this is the first pack that we had. Two uniques. Uh, you know, not very great ones or anything like that, but. Um, two fuses, you know, some jewelries, a bunch of scrolls, always looking for scrolls. Um, just because we, we burn through so many of them as we ID all this gear. Um, other than that, not a whole lot. There's a chain belt and an onyx amulet. Zodiac leather is tier 1 as well. There's a waste puller. Take a look at the shaw greens too. Mm, that's quite a nice evasion um, chest, but not really what I'm interested in. All attributes, intelligence, fire damage, man. Could have been, should have been, would have been, but isn't. Alright. So we'll keep going here. Oh, we can also drop the reverb wand. Maybe if we were in like hardcore or something, you know, you keep that to level up with, but uh, we don't really need it. Alright, so what we're really looking for is that big ass group at the end. That is going to be our money maker. And hopefully, uh, we make it to there with no problems, and we're able to kill all that stuff with very little issue at all. And you can see the, uh, the full effect. You know, we're making a little bit of money on our way there, so that's really nice to pad the cost. Again, it does cost eight chaos, four chisels, and however many, um, you know, scour alks or chaos that you spin on the map itself. So, so we are getting there. There's a chaos. Here's some beyonder. And again, it's really nice to have a lot of your uh, your cost padded as we get through here. And the staff. Pick up these scrolls real fast. Hit the chest and move along. I don't know about you guys, but I am stoked to see what we get out of this big pile at the end. You know, even if we get nothing, it's just really fun. Now yeah, we got a huge soul eater up there. Definitely didn't want that guy to be hitting on us. At all. No, thank you. Don't swing that way. No, oh, silence. OP. Unfortunate on the C, which is roll on here, but here we go. Here we go. Let the loot explosion begin. Look at how much loot everything is dropping. Look at that. And that's just like the first initial. Like, we didn't even get the full. There's the rest of it. Boom, 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 ba boom, 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 boom. My loot filter can't handle this. Need a better filter, man. Needs more filter. And as you can see, this is just absolutely insane for currency and for uniques. My, my screen is absolutely blowing up right now. And there's still more. There's still so much more. I can just hear currency popping and uniques dropping. Oh lordy.
Beyond was such a good call. Since we stack up so much stuff, Beyond is really, really nice. I'm just gonna have to turn this off for a bit, and uh, we'll we'll get the whole spectrum later. Is there more? Oh my goodness! There's so much more. I'm hearing orbs and uniques and chisels and just everything, man. We're gonna spawn. I'm sure that looks like maybe Nam already up there. Look how much beyond. Yeah, that's Nam. There was another unique or something. I don't even know. This one's this one's probably been the craziest one. I'm glad you guys are gonna see this one. Holy moly! It just keeps coming. When you think that you're done, holy Jesus! I'm afraid to turn my like loot filter back on. Uh, just showing, like, from just for showing loot, because <laughs> this is so nuts. I have no idea where the actual mob is that has uh, allies cannot die either, so that's not helpful. Oh, there it is. It's that bug. All right, nice. Come here, bug. Yeah, but you can see every. Oh, it's got inner treasure too. Man, how thoughtful. And you can just hear the currency dropping left and right. But everything uh, is like double, you know, um, double ghosted. Is that it? I think that's it. I think we're, oh, no, almost. Whew. All right, guys, y'all ready for the grand reveal? Shall we see how well we did? Holy moly. Look at this. Look at this. It doesn't even fit on the screen. Ah, oh, what is this? What is it? Look at this. Look at this. So many uniques. So much rare gear. I don't even know where to begin. I'll see you guys in like an hour. Trying to like sort through all this stuff. Holy shit. Well... I think this is the note that I'm going to end on. Um, we've, we managed to get a really, really good one here. You guys can just see there's just uniques everywhere. There's tons and tons of loot. I feel like if I were to show you the, like, there's a couple GCPs, multiple chisels. I mean, we've got so, so much stuff. It doesn't even fit on the screen. So I don't even want to press, uh, like, Alt, because I'm afraid if I do... I'm going to lag out, and I'm going to DC, but I'll try it. Oh my gosh! Look at this. Look at it! It's chunking us. Holy moly. It just, there's stuff off here in Africa. Look at this. It's, there's, it's so crazy. But again, this is what it looks like. My name is Dignity. Hopefully you guys would like to tune in and watch us do this live. Um, this is probably going to be the new method of farming for me. You know, if you come in here and you spend 8 chaos and you get a bunch of 1 chaos uniques back or you at least break, uh, you know, 1 unique into like the 10 to 15 chaos range, you profit every single time. And if you, uh, if you drop enough currency on your way through, you pretty much make back your uh, 8 chaos investment. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and it's... Uh, just like I'm overwhelmed. This is probably one of the best ones we've done. Um, but the double ghost in there was absolutely glorious. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and take off, guys. But if you want to see this live, you can catch us at Twitch TV backslash Dignity. Uh, remember to like and follow and subscribe. Definitely, uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully, it's opened your eyes up to an insane farming method. Um, but that's it for me, guys. I'm out. Peace.